Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to Oracle of Seasons! Ted has been told where the next dungeon is. But first, we're gonna do a little bit of, uh, side questing. We have a fancy item to get. First of all, though, I'm gonna check out, uh, some of my gasha trees that I planted. I so desperately want to get a piece of heart, it's driving me nuts. Come on, piece of heart, piece of heart, piece of heart, piece of heart, piece of heart. Fuck! Ugh! It is the worst ever. Alright, I'm definitely gonna have to try and get that piece of heart. It's probably gonna be off camera. I apologize for that, but... If I can catch it, I'll show it to you. But it's nothing exciting, so piece of heart comes out of a tree. Ooh! She also has a piece of heart I haven't gotten yet. We're getting near the end, and it's getting annoying. Come on. Ah, oh, shit! Come on! We did get a potion out of it. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, piss off. Anyway... I'm never going to get those piece of hearts, am I? They're going to be the last two. That's all I need. Well, I need a whole heart, so... I need two hearts. Come on. Give me a piece of heart. Fucking A. More money I don't need. Wow, this is turning out to be a bust. A horrible bust. Ted is becoming a shitty arborist. Some of Bill's horrible tree-growing skills have rubbed off on him or something. I don't know. It's no good, whatever it is. Alright, I planted one more tree. Maybe? Let's cross our fingers. Maybe? No! Oh my god. This is ridiculous. Yeah, we're planting a damn seed. I guess I really do have to go to those out-of-the-way places. Alright, let's go see how the kid's doing. I bet Garth is up to no good. He's probably grown up since we last saw him. Ooh, he looks kind of like a nerd. Oh, I just want to talk to you. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, he has grown. Uh... Wow, you guys created an antisocial faggot. Congratulations, I hope you're happy with yourselves. We'll see how that goes. But first, it's time for some side questing. Okay, what you want to do is make it summertime, go to the Gnarled Root Dungeon, and go south. Hey look, a hidden thing. And a guy in an orange robe. What do you have to say to me? Slay the four golden beasts? Well, I can do that. Okay, so after you talk to this guy, four golden beasts appear on the land. It's a lot like they did in, uh, Minish Cap. Where there were golden beasts, but this time there's only four and not a ton. And you don't have to use those goddamn faggy kinstones to get them. Anyway, I'm going to show you where they all are. We can get three of them uh, right away, and the other one we need to finish this pirate quest to do. The first one is over here. You have to go to a certain area and make it a certain season for it to work, or else they don't appear. So the first one, you have to make it autumn, and go to the entrance of the snake's remains, and look! Golden Moblin. Now they move and act just like their original counterparts. The only thing is they take an ass load of hits to kill, so... I don't exactly think they're that challenging. At least in Minish Cap, they made them faster. But uh, here, no. They're not any faster. The next one is in Spool Swamp. Alright, if you make it summertime and come down here, this is right below that second portal to Subrosia, we find a golden Octorok. Once again, no more dangerous than an actual Octorok, except that he takes an ass load of hits to kill. And I'm even wearing a red, uh, a, a Ring of Power, level 1, which pretty much ups your attack. So, can you imagine doing it without that? Anyway, off to the next one. He's actually right over here. No need for a jump cut. He's in the Tarm Ruins. We need to make it winter first, though. I love this place. God damn. This is a great area. Great tune, great palette, great puzzles. I love it. Anyway, it's a golden Lionel. Uh, he's actually harder than the others, but only because Lionels are harder enemies to begin with. They're actually bigger dicks in ages than they are in seasons, because in ages, they actually don't have any knockback. Much like the uh, Gibdos, but in Seasons they appear to have some kind of knockback, which is good. 
But we'll see that a little later in Bill's Adventure. I'm getting quite far ahead of myself. All right, like I said, we can only get three of the beasts. The other one we have to wait for, so we're going to continue the main quest. And that starts with going into this portal. Remember the pirates? Remember the captain who said he didn't want to see me till I've been through some ruins? Well, I've been through some, uh, through some fucking ruins, so let's check him out. I'm sure he's got something to say. Yes, yes! We're a competent adventure, that's for sure. We're going to go find that bell. We're going to find that bell so hard. First of all, you might want to talk to this guy, because he gives you a little hint. Yeah, that's it, for sure. You uh, might want to remember that pattern. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is... Uh, I don't know if I visited it on camera, so I'm going to make my way over there now, instead of just cutting to it. There's a beach to the eastern air, uh, side of the city. If you go south here through this tree stump. And there was a lone skeleton crew member guarding the entrance to something. Yeah, he was really looking for that bell. Anyway, remember that pattern? You have to do it right here. And it lets you right in. Now this area up here is the Samasa Desert. Fuck that sign. It has the second greatest area tune. Right under Tarm Ruins, if you ask me. The only reason it gets a slightly lower rating by me is that it is awfully repetitive, but... It's really kick-ass, if you ask me. Hmm. A ghost pirate? He was looking for the bell and died. But how does one... A isn't... Alright, whatever. Isn't a skull already dead? A skeleton? Aren't they undead already? Whatever. Anyway, that's half of a pirate ship. I wonder what the other half of it is. I guess we'll see a little later. Watch out for pit... Uh, these pits here. If you fall down, you have to start the desert over in a different area. The gimmick here is that we carry this guy's skull around, and if he starts freaking the fuck out while you're walking on a certain pit, that's where the bell is. So you pretty much have to wander around the desert holding him above your head until you find the right pits. If you fall down a pit or lose him in any way, you have to go back to that oasis to find him again. There he goes. Oh, there's the bell. Well, it's rusty. The captain's not gonna want it it's so rusty. Well, he's like, it's not my problem, but it's Ted's problem. The captain is not gonna accept something so rusty, so... Who do we know who can fix rusty shit? Hmm. I'll think about that for a second. Let's explore the rest of that, uh... Well, let's go here first. This pit leads you to a certain area. Then I'm going to speed up. Yeah, sorry about that. This game has a lot of boring segments where you're going really slow. Anyway, we get a ring! That ring is... Uh, I know what that ring is, but I'll let Vasu tell us later what that ring is. Let's check out this pirate ship. I want to know where the other half of it is, so let's go. Oh, look at that. So this ship, we're to believe, is shoved through the world. Right from the underworld to the overworld. And also, if we're to think about the physics of that, Sabrosia is right underneath the crust of the actual world, except it's upside down. If I'm thinking about this correctly. Anyway, I know only one guy who can fix a rusty bell. That's right, it's our good friend, the Sabrosian Smithy. The master is going to sense that we have this bell. Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, we need to shine that shit up right now. And I'm not saying please. Yeah, that was a long-ass wait. Sorry about that. Anyway... Wow, the bell's nice and shiny now. Alright, let's go give it to the pirate. 
All right, I've got that bell ready. Well, a sentimental moment descends upon the pirates. All right, time to set off to sea. Apparently, uh, Ted is going to join him. Ted is going to become a pirate! To the high seas! Um, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work, but I guess we'll see. This pirate's theme is fucking awesome, by the way. I'm just going to let it sink in. Alright, so I suppose that weird splashing noise is supposed to be the bell. Anyway, they sailed the ship through the fucking crust of the earth and out into the ocean. These are some badass pirates, but wait, what's this? They're getting a little seasick? I mean, come on, these guys are pirates. What the fuck are they doing? They're getting seasick. This is craziness. Ted's doing just fine, and he hasn't been on a boat ever, as far as we can tell. Maybe if they wouldn't spin around and do this gay-ass dance... They wouldn't have such sickness. Yeah, well, the pirate's a big hypocrite. Go figure. All right, they're going to put her ashore, which is actually going to be neat because it opens up the next area, which is where the dungeon is, which is the whole point of doing this. Aside from becoming a pirate also, which is awesome. In its own merits... All right, the bridge to the east takes us back to the beach, right outside of town. And the bridge to the west will take us to the graveyard, where the next dungeon is. But, I've got a fourth golden beast to hunt down. You have to use this house to get to that stump over there, because it's the only place you could change the season in this area. Wow, Ted has a lot of shit. Sacrifice himself to throw a bomb. That's devotion right there. Anyway, you want to change the season to spring, because that's where the guy uh, comes out. It's pretty handy, because it's only one season off of winter, which is what it was, so... Thanks for that, game! Alright, as I said earlier, the bridge to the east going to take us back to this beach. Now, if you recall, this beach is actually where you went in that cave and got the sword at the very beginning of the game. But, if we go east two screens, there's going to be a certain special guy hanging out. Hey, look at that! A golden dark nut. Uh, like I said earlier, no harder than any other dark nut. Just takes a lot of hits. The only reason you can't get this guy until you do the pirate thing is because the only place to change the season in this area is where I just did, outside of that house. And you can't make it spring. It's always perpetually winter here. Anyway, we killed all four beasts, so we're going to go talk to that old man. So he can give us his reward. I wonder what we're going to get. It better be something awesome. First of all, I got some rings to appraise. Three rings, to, to be exact. Uh, Whispering. We already have that. Great. Uh, Octo Ring. Already have that one. No, we don't. Bill has that one. Shit, Ted's got it. And the Rang Ring level 1. Boomerang damage is up. That's okay. But, uh, I'm about to get something so awesome, you're never gonna need any other ring. Ever. Anyway, to the old man! 
All right, I killed all the beasts. What have you got for me? True power. All right, he gives us a ring. This ring is awesome. It's totally awesome. Let's go get it appraised. All right, so we're gonna appraise this ring. It is the red ring. Now, the red ring is a return from the original Legend of Zelda, but in the original Legend of Zelda, the red ring doubled your defense. In this game, it doubles your offense. And unlike the power rings, it doesn't have the added effect of lowering your defense. So, it's just awesome in general. All it is is double damage and no catch. Anyway, I'm also going to have the rang ring with me, just in case I want to use the boomerang. And the fist ring, I think, because punching shit is awesome. In fact, let's test that shit out right now. You have to have nothing equipped. Fuck yeah, that's awesome. Let's go punch some Octoroks. Fucking yes! That is sweet. Basically, the fist uh, does about half the damage that your sword originally did, so... It's more of a novelty than anything, but it's pretty fun. To punch shit sometimes. Anyway, let's actually progress the plots, because we're almost to the next dungeon! First of all, we need to go make it a different season, but I saw a treasure chest. God damn it, another ring. I'm tired of getting rings appraised. I'm not doing it. Not anymore! It's gonna have to be for next time. And for those of you who have a, uh, a compulsion to check everything, I'm gonna warn you right now that I never check that tree next to the house. I'm so sorry. Maybe next time. Anyway, you have to make it summer! It's not that you just guess what season it has to be. You actually can figure it out by going uh, a few screens to the west here. Not going in that cave because it's useless. We need a certain item to get through that cave and we can't do it yet. Uh, oh, we don't have any seeds. For once, we have no seeds! Anyway, as you can see, you had to make it summer, because otherwise those vines wouldn't be there. And you couldn't come up here, and punching ghosts is awesome! But it takes forever. Fuck that, we're done with punching. All right, that piece of heart we're also not going to be able to get until we've beaten this dungeon. That cave that we saw down at the bottom will help us out with that. But uh, for now, I'll see you guys next time when we tackle this dungeon. Later.